Digital art is the artistic work or practice of using digital technology in the production of art. On today's episode of Showcase, we meet with Nosa, a digital artist who takes us through the process of creating art digitally. This is Showcase, I'm Nafisa Abdul Al. Currently, the information, communications, and technology sector, the tech sector, is one of the fastest growing industry in Nigeria. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the sector contributed 15% of the country's gross domestic product, second only to agriculture. This continued as a trend seen over the last five years, with the sector growing at 18% between 2016 and 2019. This growth has placed Nigeria as the largest tech market on the African continent with a growing number of tech hubs and a growing and vibrant customer base. Unfortunately, the growth in Nigeria's tech sector has not translated into jobs for Nigeria's growing youth population. The main reason is a lack of digital skills among the youth population, leading to a low sense of job readiness. Despite this being a key pillar in Nigeria's national digital economy policy and strategy 2020 to 2030, the Global Competitiveness Report places Nigeria 122nd out of 140 countries in terms of digital skills development. Despite the need for enhanced digital skills within the Nigerian economy, the tech training infrastructure is not adequately set up to provide them. Anybody doing this job at the level that we are doing it, probably self-taught, because there is nobody that knows well enough to teach you. Not because you don't want somebody to teach you, there is nobody available that knows well enough to teach you. And even if there was somebody, they'd probably be too busy to teach you. There are formal tech training courses which are provided by universities, other educational institutions, and through traineeship programs. Yet, it can be difficult for trainers to source training materials, often leaning on Nigerian diaspora abroad to provide these. And of course, you can't forget the high cost of this training. As a result, many turn to informal training methods. My name is Nosaka Okulegbe. Um, I'm, an, I'm a trained architect, but I mainly practice um, digital artistry. Basically, I, it's, it's a very wide spectrum from illustration all the way to 3D design. Digital artists, um, it's anything, uh, look at, let's look at it like this the traditional medium of arts, right? Which contains sculpting. Um, illustrations, maybe pencil work, all of that, right? Done digitally. It means you don't have to do it physically. You don't have to bring pencil and paper or take your chisel and wood. Everything is done digitally. That's digital art. So it covers a wide, a wide spectrum um, from 3D animation and 3D modeling to graphic design. That's like creating flyers and all of that. In the middle, you have video editing. You have motion graphic design. Yeah, so all of that spectrum is digital art. I was a rather serious student up to 300 level, right? Not very serious, average to the let BC student because of, there's no excuses for not being an A student, but I can give an excuse if you want me to. But what I'm saying is, I was, I was a bit more focused when I was my 100, 200, 300 level until my 300 level, I did, I came to Abuja to do my IT. So I came to Abuja here to do my administrative works. I spent six months in Abuja. I did my industrial training. I went back to school, submitted. The man said, my lecturer said, it's not possible that I did my IT at Ministry of Works. So in a 15 unit course, he gave me E. So my CGPA that was like 3.4, I was hoping, okay, if I get to at least, let me be able to graduate with maybe a strong 2-1 or possibly a first class. He gave, 
skiing the 15 unit course so i was not even struggling to not graduate to third class so at that moment immediately i saw that result i was crying and I told myself that this architecture is going to be side also i'm not going to take it serious because like it was frustrating before then i put in all my effort so at that moment i was okay I'm not going to do this long term or even if i'm going to do it long term it's going to be later right now i need to find an immediate solution to money problems okay so that's i already had an interest i from childhood i could draw very well at least people told me i could draw you know you can't really judge yourself on those things so people told me i could draw so i was always drawing and then when i realized that architecture might not work as i would want it to work so i switched i really pushed my attention towards that direction so I started learning I already knew a bit of Photoshop but then I started almost not going to class if not tests and exams waking up in my room in school just learning learning reading on the internet what is happening learning 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 different softwares I, I think before I left school I learned all architectural softwares that's Revit um, Revit 3DX Mass that's for architecture and then for design at land, After Effects, um, Photoshop and Illustrator. So that was like before I, I left school. So um, yeah, basically that's how I chose this route. It was at that moment I decided that, okay, I'm going to do architecture obviously because I, somebody has paid for this school fees, but it might not be as serious as I would have loved it to be because of that one incident. Yeah, that's basically how we got here. Yes, it's very, even if I have to say so myself, but it's very profitable, right? Um, and not just because it's tech, it's everything is always about monopoly and excellence, right? I believe or I think that if you want to make money, it should be in a place where there are not plenty of people that can do what you do, and there are not plenty of people that can do it better than you do, right? It monopoly always drives prices, uh -huh, because some of the things we do, are not magic it's not that hard but because there are not many people that can do it and then there are um, not many people that can do it as well as you can do it then you can really drive your prices up basically technological industry is good right but the only thing with our tech is that i think it's it's the wrong market to focus on right now if as um i don't know as a venture capitalist if it's somebody that has money that really wants it's not a startup a venture capital is somebody that really has money want to throw money into a new sector. I think tech would not be the right, unless it's financial technology, right? You see a lot of persons are sitting there, Kuda, Piggy, Piggy Vest. If it's fintech, it would definitely work because money is a universal good, right? But the th things like social media or, I don't know, I, I'm not sure. It's not as if I'm trying to say that it's not possible, but I'm not sure, right? I think um, right now, we have not gotten to the place where we should be the one pioneering technology right we are as for now we are adopters whatever the west or the asians they produce we adopt not because we can't produce or i'm short i'm short changing our ability saying that would nigerians or africans cannot be in the forefront of technology is that we don't have the enabling environment right and it's not the government's fault it's not that the government cannot create it is that okay how do we compete with silicon valley Right? Silicon Valley is in the forefront. If anything is happening in technology, it's probably happening, happening in Silicon Valley. Right? So how do you create something in Africa that can compete at that level? Right? No, this is not brain power now. It's not individuals that we're talking about. We're talking about the environment. Even if the government starts putting money into this, there are other sectors where we feel that things are more pressing. Right? Let's think electricity. Let's think good roads. Basically, that's why I think about that. I still work uh, almost full time as an architect, right? Um, I work with a company here in Abuja. Um, we've handled multiple projects in the real estate sector. Um, so I'm basically their in house architect. But the whole reason why I don't go to the office every day is because um, until they need to design a new structure, I'm not required to be present. So, so it's a win win for us. We've be able to achieve that middle ground where, okay, if you need me, I'll be there. But if you don't need me, I'll be, I'll be in my house pursuing other goals. And yeah, that's where we are.
being an architect and being a digital artist is still the same thing. So it's not different at all. It's not as if you are trying to be a lawyer and a digital artist, right? They are all visual arts. It's like you are doing something that people would see. You are trying to solve a problem or you are trying to entertain people visually. So whether I'm erecting beautiful structures or I'm designing beautiful videos, beauty, right? That's essentially what it's about. So whether we are trying to design a house in Abuja or I'm trying to create content for virtual reality is design. So I don't feel very... When I was coming up, like maybe four, two, three years ago, I used to have a problem with switching, right? Maybe I have worked as an architect this week and tomorrow I have to be a video editor. I have to like take time out to be like, okay, those are think like a video editor. But I think as I've worked, worked um, over the last few years, I've been able to develop the ability that, okay, this, everything is the same thing. Just wake up and go and work, right? You're still watching Showcase. Let's take a short break and we'll be right back. Do stay with us. Hello and welcome to Showcase. On Showcase, we are going to be delving into the lives of emerging entrepreneurs across the country. My calligraphy is Arabic calligraphy. I had written the Quran, uh, the complete Quran, before reaching the age of 12. From professionals to artisans and even social media influencers, I am going to be taking you on a journey to show you the beautiful, the motivational and the resilient nature of Nigerian entrepreneurs who continue to thrive irrespective of the challenges they face in the country. Welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us, this is Still Showcase where we're having a conversation with Nota here about digital art. This is Still the Program Showcase. White collar jobs are great, and I won't, I won't try to downplay it because I didn't get one. They are great, and I have seen people live good lives on those things. But personally, maybe because of circumstance or maybe because of the fact that it was not available to me, it's not something I gravitate towards, right? And the reason is, when people get out of school, the illusion or the problem is you think, okay, if I can't, get, it's like I'm looking for a job. Is I think it's the wrong mindset. I think I don't know. I'm not trying to make rules for people here. It's like I think it's the wrong mindset to say that okay, well, I'm looking for a job, because essentially what that means is it is not in your hands. It's in another person's hands. This like you, there's nothing you can control. So you can be in the same place for like five years and be like, ah, why have you not moved forward? Hey, I did not see a job now. You can't be blamed, right? You really did not see a job. Okay, but then I prefer to think that okay, I'm out of school. I'm no longer dependent on people that have provided for me over the years. How do I make money? It's simple. Nothing else. It's not whether I have a job or not. The job is good if I get it. If I don't get it, but still, the essential problem is we have to make money at somehow, somehow. It's not as if I'm gratifying money, although we should, right? It's important. But I'm saying that whether you are a billionaire or you have 100,000, you have to make money. You have to survive. So essentially, it's the bottom line. How do I survive? That would be the question. Get out of school and ask yourself, how do I survive? Whatever answer you get, follow it. That's, that's my take on that. About learning these things, the actual issue is there are no standard frameworks. You know how, like now as an architect, you go to school, 
you know that in the first year you do illustration, second year you do graphics. Is, that's why architecture and graphic design are actually kind of similar. Because in year two, we do something called architectural graphics. It's like teaching you about letters and how you should use them to present your drawings. There is a structure that you follow if you are going to um, learn anything, right? Like if you go to law school, they teach you this how to this what how to behave in court and all of that. But these fields, like all these fields where animation and all of that, it's not that there are no standards to it, right? Is that in this part of the world, even in those um, First Nations, they have over the last twenty years is when they started putting structures to this thing, right? Because they were more of a hobby that people found out that oh this hobby is rather lucrative right this hobby is rather hard and it's hard to learn hard to teach so let's put a structure so that we can encourage people to come in and also maybe monetize it and all of that okay so but in this part of the world we've not gotten there yet so we're like pioneers anybody doing this job at the level that we are doing it probably is self-taught because there is nobody that knows well enough to teach you not because you don't want somebody to teach you there is nobody available that knows well enough to teach you. And even if there was somebody, they'll probably be too busy to teach you. Right? Because they have a skill that is on high demand. Where would they get the time to sit down with you and tell you, do this, do that? So when people tell me, okay, I want to learn, I'll be like, YouTube. YouTube is the free, it's, it's like it's a free university for everything. Right? If you are thinking of anything, you probably get it on YouTube for free. Okay, if you, if, you, if you don't like going to that search, doing that research, you can also go on all these um, new websites, now Udemy, all of those ones where you can buy a course on the particular topic. But still, I still think YouTube is the best because you get to learn from diverse people. You see how people, you see the same action, different people um, will do it differently. Like, the same thing, maybe, maybe retouching a photo. Or like now, the assistant desaturating a photo bar, making it black and white. There's a way I do it. There is a way my friend does it. The only reason why we don't do it the same way is because we learn from different sources. So that diversity of opinion will really help you to become a great problem solver if you learn from that crowd. That's why I think, um, I think people should always learn that way. And to your question, everybody that can function at a relatively good level either studied abroad or learns on YouTube. That's, for, for now, we don't have... I think there's just one school in Nigeria and it was established over the last five to ten years. Just one school and it's in Lagos. So um, that's the only one I know. Maybe there might be more, but that's the only one I know. There's just one school for a structured, structured teaching environment in this field. Every, every day when I wake up, I don't know if this helps, but the first thing I learn is or try to read this, okay, what's going on in my field? What is happening now? What, ha what, what are the innovations? What is being done, right? And that has really helped me because I'm always at the forefront of information. What is being done? How is it done? And this information is not paid for. That's the thing, there is no mystery. There is nobody staying there and saying that, okay, well, uh, bring money, let me tell you what's going on. It's for free, right? It's just that you should be willing to go and get it. Okay, so to that note, that's how I got, it's not as if that's how I got the money, but that's how I even knew these things existed, right? Um, I had a graphic tablet when I went for my first interview as a video editor for a, a TV station here in Abuja. I had a graphic tablet, the person that was interviewing me did not know what a graphic tablet was. So when I brought it, I was like, what is this? So at that point, I knew I had gotten that job. Because if you don't know what I'm using, you, can't t you are not qualified to not give me the job, right? So actually, I got the job that they resumed i think the next day and all of that so is that if you start the forefront of information you would always know what to buy what to invest in right so like from everything here it's not because somebody told me to buy them it's that okay how do i move forward what is the new thing what is what is um what is industry standard equipment what is being used abroad because the goal is not to function only in our local environment let it be that if you compete with people, if you ever get a chance to work with people that are from outside the country, they won't say, oh, eh, this is not a local champion. Now you will hold your ground, you'll be able to do your task and deliver them. Right, so basically, so staying in front of information, whatever information you get, you act on it. If, there are, if these are new equipment that are coming out, you buy them. That's exactly where we are. That's how we get to this kind of, get all these equipment and all of that.
value drives money. This means there's an inflation, right? Value drives money. It means like if you have something that is valuable to offer, whether there is no money on it, somebody will find money to give you, right? Assuming there is no water to drink anywhere, you had water, somebody will pay you, right? So whether the economy is good or bad, just stay valuable. If you are valuable and you have something to offer, somebody would definitely. The person would cry, say money, not it. Like, ah, this country is hard, this country is hard, but well, take this money. Not because they like you, it's because you are offering value, right? So I think um, value, if you are value oriented, the economy fluctuating would not really affect you. The only way I would say it that has affected me is in the valuation of the naira against the dollar, right? Because most of the equipments I buy, you can't get them in Nigeria. So you have to like convert your money to dollar and then go put that dollar in your domiciliary account and then order with that. So imagine an equipment that you could have bought for say maybe 150k now costing you like 300 to 400k. So it's like it's bad but you, you know you always have to put things in context. Well if it's if I now have to buy this thing at 300k, I was supposed to 150k. It just means I have to increase my price by two. Simply what it means. I worked with an NGO during the corona period, and then the, the task was to create assets for 3D. And then I created the assets. I the, some people already be working for them. They called. They called. They were like. Who did? Why is it so good? Like they didn't expect this from Africa. It's so nice. It's like, okay, right? Because I was basically doing what I thought. Just like I'm working with a foreign company, so let's just make it a industry standard. So when they now called back, I'm like, man, this is so good. We didn't expect this. This is nice. I was working through a third party, right? So the person was not thinking that. Yes, now Nigeria. Now we are very good. So that kind of thing. So. Yeah, I felt really proud. Those are, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's rather weird that I'm still validating myself by foreigners. But you know how you are doing something that people around you cannot appreciate. And the people that can appreciate it still appreciate it, right? You know, if you are doing um, this type of job in Nigeria, to impress people is not hard. If I do anything at this point, anything. In fact, if I go to a place and I showcase a job, I expect people to be like, it's good, right? But when you're working with foreigners, you know that these people have seen quality. It's not as if, it's not like in Nigeria here when you put everything, anything up and people are like, ah, it's, ah, this is so nice because they have not seen things that are of that standard before. But if you're working with foreigners that have seen quality, they work constantly with quality and you are still able to impress them. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's really good. If you are seeing challenges, it's just one, is electricity. Electricity, if if a if um, a politician, right, comes up and be like, I won't do anything for Nigeria. I will just fix the electricity and go after four years. I would not only vote for him. I would use my blood, my sweat, my money to make sure he gets in power, because it's rather appalling. It's 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 complicated. It's a complicated issue. Right? The issue of electricity is complicated. I won't even say that because I'm sitting here and I just denigrate and say ah, they don't know what they are doing. Because the people we have there, our leadership, our leaderships, they actually know what they are doing. Because the thing I know about leadership is that you don't get there by mistake. There is no way to fumble yourself into it and be like, hey, I was sleeping, they now made me president. It's not possible. Right? You get to those places by meticulous planning and you know moving forward. So I, I would not say they are dull or that they don't know what they are doing. They know what they are doing. There are probably challenges that are beyond their power or beyond their immediate control. But still, I feel like, come on, it's electricity. Let's just fix it, right? Because once we fix that, like for me, I spend money on fuel a lot, right? Although this area is rather good when it comes to electricity, but I spend, still spend a lot of money on fuel. Imagine that is no longer one of my concerns. Probably my electricity bill, electricity bill will go, but the noise, pollution, um 40 generators sometimes you wake up and a gen will just not own or you need servicing you might blow your equipment all of that so if we can eliminate that at no extra cost why not right that's one of the major challenges i would say i've had if we want to add other things is people but people are people people would always be people is that people will say things and not hold up to what they have said and um 
as creatives, people usually think we are for use. Uh, and there is that. So, but if you try to understand people, that people are what they are, they are people. Because if you only only look outside, you might not see it in yourself too. We only we always want our interest to come through. Like if I want something and you're offering it for free, of course, right? So people will always want their best best interest. So that's why I don't really consider people a problem. Because if you're able to stand your ground and be like, see, I know all these stories you are telling me, sweet, but this is what I want for this thing, then. It works out, but if you are the type of person that plays to emotions and they say, "Ah, no one will do it like this. Ah, you will blow, you will change your life," then you might have a problem dealing with people. Uh-huh. But if you can stand your ground and know your value and be like, "Okay, this is where it is," but that does not mean that you don't you don't collaborate with people. You collaborate when you can do the maths and say that, "Okay, this person is actually heading to the right direction." Collaborate with them, but for the most part, people think creators are for use. They can tell you stories and then get to do the work. After you do the work, the default is, ah, what do you do, Seth? Not be just, uh, you design something, which now you shut him and pay you, right? Because I've had experiences where I traveled, did work, used my money to travel, did work for like two months, came back and they're not telling me that, hey, what did you design? I'm offering you this money, I say it's not enough, right? Because we didn't have a proper agreement before I traveled, I felt, okay, this is my person, I'm trying to collaborate, money is not the issue, money is always the issue. Money is, always, people are real when money is mentioned. I am not big on giving advice, right? Especially since you've not tried. So, but what I would say is from my own life, and I think everybody's life is different. So that's why I'm saying from my own life. What I would say is, I don't know, pick something you're passionate about that is profitable, not just passionate. Like, passion is good. It makes the work easy, but profit is money. And that's what you survive on. So passionate and profitable, then just start. There's a lot of distractions. There are people going through illegal means, selling their conscience, doing whatever, making this money real quick. But believe me, if you do it the right way, if you do it the right way and you actually, the money starts coming at some point, nothing feels better. We have come to the end of this episode on Showcase. As usual, we hope you found it interesting and inspiring. We'll be back next week with another mind-blowing package. I'm Nefisa Abdul-Al. Thank you for watching.